This is Marina. Today's topic is the sexual narcissist and emotional rape. Now, this is a very devastating situation for targets to find themselves in. And the reason for this is because although it is emotional rape, and we also refer to it as rape by fraud, is that it can't be validated as a crime. So therefore, the target actually feels that somehow they're responsible because they allowed it to happen. So why do we call it emotional rape? Well, we refer to it as emotional rape because the target consented in having sex with the narcissist. But the reason she or he consented is because there wasn't full disclosure. So it wasn't an informed decision. They didn't know that the uh, sexual narcissist was either having sex with other people when they first met, that they were having sex, uh, you know, with someone behind their back, that they were possibly dating other people, they were still on dating sites, they were writing letters to other women and organising to meet them. None of that the target was aware of. The target also didn't know about the sexual narcissist's previous history, that possibly a lot of affairs. That's why, you know, their partners may have left them. All of this was not disclosed to the target. Therefore, when the future faking started and the target believing that they were in a relationship, a genuine relationship that both people wanted to work on. So that's why it's referred to as rape by fraud. So emotional rape. So although physically you consented to it, emotionally you did not because you were not aware of the truth. When disclosure occurs and when the target becomes aware, it's usually done in a fairly shocking way that they find something, they see it on their phones, or they find them on dating sites. I mean, the list goes on. When that happens, the target goes into shock. Now, of course, once confronted and once you know you go through and all of the other lies get told, nothing happened, nothing happened. And we, of course, uh, eventually will start to believe them. Now, it's not unusual that, uh, just say if you don't want to talk to them, it's not unusual that during that time, they're actually still liaising with the other person. They will even, you know, drop you off after uh, having to go and talk through things and them vowing that they still love you and that they do want a relationship, they will drop you back at home and they will then go and see the other person. So when the shock comes to the target, uh, what will then occur is that they may often go back. In fact, nine times out of 10, people do usually go back for the first time. So to do that, to actually go back you know, into the relationship, the target then develops betrayal blindness. And betrayal blindness is when we literally turn a blind eye to the betrayal, although we know full well that it did occur, subconsciously we do, and also we are aware that it is still happening. There's usually a lot of fear with the targets. They can sense something is wrong. So sexual narcissists destroy the lives of good people. They destroy the lives of people who are wanting love. Now, the sexual narcissist also knows that sex is uh, extremely bonding. Sex is what they use to make their uh, you know, targets attached to them, but also to destroy them. It's not unusual for sexual narcissists to also deliberately want the target to find out that they have been with another person. So for example, uh, one of my viewers went on a holiday with the sexual narcissist. It was an overseas holiday. And she was already really sort of like concerned that something was going on because he was treating her very badly. And that's not unusual either. When they have an affair partner or affair partners, 
they will treat the significant other very poorly. And so when they went on holiday, he deliberately left his phone in the uh, hotel room, knowing she would find it and find uh, a letter that he had written to a woman whom he had promised he would no longer contact. And that was done so that then the target, of course, would experience post-traumatic stress. Uh, and so we need to be careful because the whole thing with sexual narcissists is that they want to destroy us. So they will keep us addicted to, uh, to uh, the uh, trauma of wanting to make the relationship work, becoming anxious, and that is how they get their self-esteem. How sad. How sad that we share the planet with these type of people. When we go to heal from, from this type of trauma, when eventually you do leave the narcissist, the trauma bonds that are formed are um, quite intense. And because the experience has been so traumatic and because sex has been involved and love was involved and everything else, releasing these trauma bonds as well as then healing from the uh, traumatic experience can be quite difficult. But that is where I specialise and that is where I continue to help people as I can locate them fairly quickly and together we start moving through this as fast as we can. All right, if I can help you in any way, please reach out and bye for now.